If you're a yoga teacher and you're trying to figure out a way to plan your career, your finances, meaning how can you make a living, how can you make enough money to support a family, maybe buy a home, have some financial security, I have some questions coming in from readers and from students around the world. Hopefully, my answers to their questions will help you as you plan your career as a yoga teacher as well. And the first one that I have here is a common recurring question. And it says, Lucas, yoga teacher pay is so low. How have you been able to teach for a couple of decades? The first thing you need to understand is that yoga teacher pay is not low. The average teacher's salary is somewhere between forty dollars and $62,000 per year. And keep in mind, those are teachers working part-time, like less than 20 hours per week. So if you were to look at any statistics, that puts you in middle or even upper middle class, depending on where you are in the world. Yoga teacher pay is not low. What happens is most teachers aren't working very much. We can solve that a little bit later. Okay, the next question. I don't have enough social media followers. I hear this from teachers around the world. Lucas, you have 50,000 followers on Instagram or 300,000 followers on Facebook. Here's the thing, I'm old. I've been online for a long time. I don't know who most of those followers are and they don't know who I am. In the yoga teaching business, it's not about scope and scale. It's really about deep connections. When you're thinking about building your community, never go chasing big numbers of social media followers. I always think about the depth and the breadth of the connections that you truly have. Next one I get a lot is people say, no one pays for yoga anymore because there's all this free content on YouTube. There is a lot of free content on YouTube. A lot of it's really good and it's getting better every day. What people don't understand is after two decades in the industry, what I've seen is every time there's more free content, it drives demand for more paid content. For every free class on YouTube, 10 people are paying for classes, online, offline, workshops, retreats, all of the above. More is more. The industry, the paid industry is growing by 10% plus per year. So don't worry. The next when I get a lot is this imposter syndrome. And it goes like this. I'm not blank enough. I'm not flexible enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not thin enough. All of our self-doubt, it's always based in a grain of truth. For sure, we could practice more. For sure, we could get more skills. The important thing to remember is that in this industry, there are perfect people people who are specimens of the human body. They can do every pose. They can stand on their hands. They look great. Uh, but those are not the most successful teachers from a financial perspective. They're also not the most impactful teachers from actually helping students make change. What I've seen in the industry is the teachers who are doing the best are the ones that get really, really focused on the journey, not the destination. Your students are looking for a teacher who's just a couple steps ahead of them. You need to keep practicing. Yes, you need to keep growing. Yes, you need to keep building your skill set. But don't let that keep you from getting started right now. And don't for a minute think that you're competing with that perfect body 22 year old doing a handstand on the beach. You're not. Your audience is different. Your community is different. The next one I get it a lot is Lucas, I want to be successful, but I don't care about money. This is a really naive thing to say. I don't care about money. When you say I don't care about money, what it really means is someone else cares about money for me. That might be your significant other, that might be your parents, that might be a government, but somebody is looking after your finances if you're not. And so part of finding a career path is really growing up and taking responsibility for your finances. This is an important one that comes up a lot. Um, people will tell me and ask me, Lucas, how do I make it in the industry? It seems like the yoga studios and the big online platforms are the only ones making money. This is not true. In fact, the opposite is true. Uh, big studio groups, they go out of business every day. Most yoga studios never make any money. Most studio owners slash managers slash head teachers make less than their most successful teacher. And the big online platforms, there's a couple of them that make a little bit of money, but most of them, it's a race to the bottom. And the teachers on their platforms are doing way better than the platforms themselves. The yoga industry is very similar to the music industry. The people who are the most successful do way better than the platforms and the publishers themselves. Okay, the last one that I'd like to address is this idea that you just can't make a good living with yoga. You know, CNN Money did a, a report recently talking about salaries and they estimated that the average yoga teacher makes around $62,000 per year. And keep in mind, that's for working part-time, 20 hours a week. So there's really a tremendous amount of potential. It's a $37 billion industry all around the world, and it's growing at about 10% per year. So if you want to set up a private yoga business, if you want to teach workshops, retreats, whatever you'd like to do, it's really important to remember that you've got to get your head right, your mindset right, to understand that 
This market is not the problem. The problem right now is you're not seeing and you're not tapping into the opportunities that are available. Hope that's helpful. My name is Lucas. You can learn more at yogabody.com. Please post any questions below and I look forward to connecting with you soon.